Welcome back to Mechanical Pros. I'm here with Patrick with Riello, and we're talking condensing boilers. Patrick, we got the array model. Tell me what's going on here. What array does is it uh, it builds our long production application of what we call a, a heat engine or heat engine concept. And what we do here, John, is that we're going to fire the heat exchanger, and then we're also going to provide you a circulating system to move the energy, the usable energy, hydronic energy, from the fired heat exchanger to the system where it can be used. So we have uh, multiple heat exchangers in an array system, hence the name array. Hence the name but, array, like fan wall. But yes. each one, like a fan wall, is, is completely independent. Completely independent. For the most part, they're autonomous. The, the fired heat exchanger with the circulating system and all the controls to operate are all independent. Inside the cabinet, where typically we have two or more, two, three, four, six, or eight of the heat engines, we do have some common controls and safety devices that serve all the heat engines in the cabinet. But for the most part, except for those, those single digit controls that we have, less than 10, that serve the common purpose, everything that's being done at the heat engine level is unique to that heat engine and is repeated from heat engine to heat engine. And so as you, as you look at this, it isn't that we're doing two different things, it's that we're doing the same thing twice in this cabinet. And what we successfully do then is instead of having to build a 800,000 BTU fired heat exchanger, we instead offer two 400,000 BTU heat exchangers to get to 800,000. The failure of one does not affect the other. Generally, the problems that they encounter when they get called to service a boiler, the boiler's down, the boiler's giving somebody some trouble, it are the silly little things that would happen at the heat engine level. In the case of a ray, when that happens to one of the two, three, four, six, or eight heat engines that are installed, that heat engine has a challenge and somebody needs to come look at it, but not in the middle of the night because another heat engine or heat engines continue to operate independently. So to me, that's a really big deal. We have redundancy in the cabinet. It gives us a lot more flexibility from a turndown standpoint, and we can actually isolate the actual, uh, not only the combustion, but the, but the flow. Yes. And we can, we can service a heat engine independently while the other is running. Well, the other ones are running. So two things are that you mentioned is that, is that the turndown of the cabinet is actually the turndown of a, is the combined turndown of each of the connected heat engines. So as we look at this one, and this is where the math gets a little fun, each of these heat engines at 400,000 BTUs has a 10 to one turndown. So the minimum input here is going to be 40,000 BTUs. As you put two of them in the cabinet, we go from 40,000 BTUs, the minimum input of one of the heat engines, to 800,000 BTUs, the total output of both heat engines. That gives us our range of the installed appliance. Contrast that with somebody trying to get that same range of operation in a single fired heat exchanger, or trying to get that turned down and that redundancy installed over multiple fired heat exchangers in the same mechanical room, having to be connected, vented, controlled, wired and everything, which is what we've already done for you. It doesn't take somebody very long staring at this uh, to recognize that a single array, as long as the capacities work, is gonna be as or more reliable than two um, single fired heat exchangers. And so you sit two, conventional, if you will, boiler systems next to each other. Any little problem you have with either one of those is gonna result in the failure, the lack of capacity of that entire unit. All the little things that can go wrong in the case of array happen generally at the heat engine level, and then the other heat engines are allowed to operate. They're entirely mechanically, electrically controlled, gas, exhaust, everything isolable from each other. You can remove a heat engine and go work on it someplace else while all the other heat engines, whether it's another two, three, five or eight, five or seven of them continue to operate in the cabinet and serve the hydronic yeah. heating need of the building. And so the, when I first uh, look at this, I, I see multiple heat exchangers, multiple redundancy, which means multiple parts, but really it's the same part used over and over again. Over and so over again. we're not talking about multiple part numbers. We're talking about multiple applications of the same part. The same part, so yes. and so really upside as far as an owner, as far as maintenance personnel, for example, anytime, if an owner has a collection of array boilers um, in, at their site, um, the variation would be, do they have, do they have 400,000 BTU or 500,000 BTU heat engines? There is a distinct, uh, there is a distinct pump, there's a distinct blower, the, those are distinct pieces that go. But once you have the blower 
for the 400,000 BTU heat engine, once you have the blower for the 500,000, whether you have a 800 or a 4 million, you have the blower that you need. Um, it isn't a different blower for every model, 800, 1 million, 1.5 million, 2 million, 3 million, yeah. 4 million. It's the same collection of parts, just more or fewer of them in the cabin. Yeah, I can see that being really attractive to uh, schools or institutions that, that don't have enough maintenance staff to really you know, get to they where have they other priorities. And you know, they can they can stock parts and, and then go out and fix a, fix a problem with the same part. You'd actually have to, you'd have to really neglect it. Once you have more than one heat engine in a cabinet, you're really gonna have to become, you got to be particularly deliberate in your negligence to ever be down, down. So what I'm saying is, is that um, the little things that happen that would take down, a, would take down a, a heating boiler will take down part of the capacity of the array. Um, the need for an emergency service call, bring somebody in on a weekend, to bring somebody in on Thanksgiving weekend, which is when all the problems occur. Right. The reason to bring somebody in overnight is diminished significantly because you're gonna have another one, two, three, five, seven heat engines available to do that job. So we've been talking about um, uh, the array design, the, the, the heat engine concept being flow independent, having redundancy, um, and talking about economies of scale. We, we just flip this thing around so we can get the view of the backside of it. Um, tell, me what, tell me what we got going on this side. From, from this side, what we can see is that we're, uh, we can see the boiler room in the box, if you will. We can see that the, all the connections, uh, most of the major connections are on top. We're gonna bring, we're gonna pull water down from the loop. It's gonna be, it's gonna be distributed and circulated through the heat engines, and it's gonna be pumped back through this manifold, back to the system. Beyond here, we have the combustion air connection on top that's gonna to allow us to bring either air from the space, or we can bring some PVC or some spiral to this connection. Uh, from this side, we also get to see the flow meter. Um, here are the black devices here, the flow meter. We use a flow meter, so we get a true gallons per minute output that is harder to jumper and, and deceive than a flow switch, because it may not be convenient in the moment to fix a flow switch. Um, so we may determine that the, that the flow is fine, that the switch is just a little fussy and we'll get back to it and jumper it out. That just doesn't work very well. That eventually mm -hmm. leads to a failed heat exchange. And again, from this side, as we saw from the other side, anybody that walks around and can see that if the, that if the grunt foss circulator fails, there's another one. If the flow meter starts to give us trouble, there's another one. Everything as we go around is repeated on the heat engines. Thanks for coming in, hanging out with us. It's fun to talk boilers with you. Good um, to be here. Look yeah. forward to coming back. Yeah, look forward to keep doing this. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, and come check us back out on Mechanical Pros.